If you're about to pick up Red Mage for the first time and find it a bit overwhelming to get started, then this video is for you. This guide will teach you how to play Red Mage and Endwalker at level 50 specifically, including everything from spells to abilities to role actions available. Now, let's start with the balance gauge. This gauge measures your white and black mana. Casting spells will produce one or both of these two mana types depending on the spell. If the difference between the two types of mana is greater than 30, then you will favor the greater one, which makes the weaker one generate slower. You'll want to avoid this. The solution is to try to always focus on producing the lower one when you have the choice. When the gem turns red, you have enough mana to start and finish your melee combo. You will need 50 of both mana types to do so. We will return to this later. The primary mechanic of the Red Mage is the passive trait, Dual Cast. Whenever you take the time to cast a spell, you gain Dual Cast, which makes your next spell with a cast time instant. The way that this interacts with your toolkit is that you have both fast spells, like Jolt, and slow spells, like the Thunder. It should be clear from the tooltips that the fast spells are only slightly weaker than the slow spells, so casting the slow spells properly is not a good idea. Instead, you cast Jolt, which then grants you dual cast, allowing you to cast the Thunder or the Arrow instantly. Remember to try to focus on casting the one that corresponds to the mana you have the least of. Whenever you cast the Thunder or the Arrow, there is a 50% chance that it enables you to use one of the stronger fast spells, the Fire and the Stone. These spells take priority over Jolt due to the higher mana production as well as the higher damage. Additionally, if you somehow have access to one of these spells, you have a proc as it is commonly called, but you also somehow have a dual cast proc, then you may want to prioritize using the slow spell you do not have a proc from. Just keep in mind that it is more important that you don't end up favoring that mana type because of it. The Red Mage also has access to three abilities that all do damage. Abilities are actions that can be cast between spells, as they are unaffected by the global recast timer. However, they still take a bit more than half a second to perform. See the short in the top right corner for a more detailed explanation. Flash is a simple attack action that you want to use as often as possible. Don't bother sitting on it, the cooldown is so short you will probably get it available again in time if for some reason you really do need it for something. However, do remember to only use it after a dual casted spell. Core Core and Displacement are two actions that together serve a specific purpose. Core Core moves you to your target such that you can use your melee combo, while Displacement moves you back to a distance. Use these accordingly, but always remember that the amount of running you can do between casts due to dual cast may allow you to simply run up to the enemy or run away from them depending on what you require. Consider that both Core Core and Displacement do significant damage too, and that the burst movements can bring you to safety much faster than running. You also have access to Engagement, which shares cooldown with Displacement. The only difference is that Engagement does the attack without the backflip, which can be helpful in small arenas where you would rather not get thrown about. Each action can hold up to two uses, so you can use one of each for damage and then keep one just in case, or you can use all of them for damage. Your melee combo is your most powerful single target attacking option when it is enchanted from your balance gauge. To do so, you need to have 50 of both white and black mana to start. The recast timers on these three attacks are significantly faster than your spells causing them to be effectively more than 50% stronger than your general spellcasting options in terms of damage per second. Next, let's talk about Area of Effect options, or AoE for short. At level 50, your AoE options are limited. Essentially, all you can do is use the Thunder 2 or the Arrow 2 and then scatter, alternating the mana types to keep them both up. At this level, this equates to 220 potency every 5 seconds per target. This introduces a set of specific strategies depending on the amount of enemies at hand. For two targets, you want to replace Jolt by the Thunder 2 and the Arrow 2, or in other words, replace the fast single target spell Jolt with the fast AoE spells. The Fire and the Stone are, however, still more powerful than the AoE options. For three targets, you want to replace the Thunder and the Arrow, note these are the single target slow spells, with Scatter, the AoE slow spell. 
Additionally, you also replace all fast single target spells with the AoE fast spells. At 5 targets, you might want to not use your melee combo at all. Personally, I would also recommend keeping your melee combos for 2 targets or less at this level. You should also remember to use your flash, core recall and displacement or engagement in between your spell casts for extra free damage. The final ability of the red mage is acceleration. This causes your next the thunder, the arrow or scatter to be instant and guaranteed to proc the associated spell. In the case of scatter, it instead adds 50 potency to the attack. At this level, using acceleration on cooldown to skip a use of a fast spell, or for the benefit of gaining significant AoE damage, is typically better than saving it for being able to cast while moving. However, if you know you need the movement shortly, it can be beneficial to wait a moment. Finally, let's talk about roll actions. Swift cast is a simple ability that is used in the exact same way as acceleration. Just keep in mind that unlike acceleration, swift cast can be spent on any spell, so make sure that it is a slow spell. Of course, Swiftcast also does not have the guaranteed proc or damage boosting properties and for these reasons can more reasonably be kept for movement if you want to be sure. Lucid Dreaming causes you to gain 3850 MP over 21 seconds. The base MP regeneration in the game is 200 every 3 seconds, so 4000 over 60 seconds. This is relevant because Red Mages actually spend more than 200 MP every 3 seconds on average. So, if a fight drags on, you will eventually be required to use Lucid Dreaming. If you die, recovering your MP to a healthy state after being resurrected also requires the use of Lucid Dreaming for the same reasons. It is not a bad idea to use Lucid Dreaming early, so using it when you have about 7500 MP or less usually works out well. Let's summarize. For single target, you attack primarily by alternating fast spells and slow spells, prioritizing the more powerful procced fast spells over the non-procced jolt, and try to prioritize the slow spell for which you do not have a proc waiting, while also prioritizing the slow spell that produces the mana type you currently have less of. When you reach 50 white and black mana, you can use your melee combo, where core recall and displacement or engagement may be convenient to assist in the movement required, but should be used regularly just for their damage potencies. Remember to use flesh on cooldown and make use of acceleration to get more procs and for skipping fast spells. Swiftcast can also be used as a small damage gain or mobility tool, and lucid dreaming is useful for keeping your MP high. For AoE, fast AoE spells override Jolt on 2 targets and all fast spells on 3 targets. Scatter overrides slow spells at 3 targets. Don't bother using melee combos with 5 or more enemies, but consider saving the melee combo for more single target focused combat anyway. Still, don't forget to use Flash, Acceleration, Swiftcast, Core Recall, Displacement, Engagement and Lucid Dreaming. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Consider liking, subscribing and hitting the bell if you would like to see more content like this. And if you have any questions or anything to add, leave a comment. If you want to support me and the channel even more, you can also become a member. Fun fact, before Endwalker, the melee combo required 80 of each mana type to execute, about 60% more than today. However, back then your single target spells all generated between 50% more, Jolt, and 80% more mana for everything else. Strangely, your AoE spells generate the same amount of mana they always did, 